Fataz is just in there doing the dishes. Literally stuck in Mexico. We need to hire a car and get to Phoenix and um, get some provisions and pick up some stuff so we can leave and we can't even hire a car. So frustrating. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Hi guys, welcome to another episode and we just want to share with you a little bit of financial advice today. Yes, this is not a financial... <laughs> we do not come first for financial advice. No. This is episode, we named it Behind Closed Doors and Underneath the Floors, or something like that anyway, I don't know what we named it. <laughs> something along those lines, but why we said that was um, because we're taking you into a little bit of behind what's happening other than our boat project and I thought it was important we didn't want to like be negative or like we don't like to kind of focus on things that are negative but I thought this would be helpful we've been traveling outside of our home country for seven years so overseas away from our home country for seven years we've never had this problem and for some reason it happened at a really bad time we just wanted to share so that no one else comes into trouble like this. I'm sure you won't because there has been a lot of factors why this really affected us. But the last video we shared that our credit card was blocked. So we just wanted to clarify a few things. It was a credit card and we only have one. Yes, a lot of people are like, well, why don't you have more bank cards? Why don't you open up more accounts? Okay, so we have, we have lots of debit cards at several banks and we, if any, we've ever had any trouble, it doesn't matter because we use another bank, another card. We've always had backup. The problem with this is we only have one credit card. And for the whole 10, nearly 10 years that we've been traveling, we've never relied on our credit card. But <laughs> we put ourselves in a little bit of a situation and we've been refitting this boat and we thought we we're at the end of it and we've kind of just been living off our credit card for a little bit. Which, so last time we got paid, I put all of our money into our credit card. Two days later, our credit card got blocked and we had no access to it. Compulsory saving, not allowed to spend, we couldn't spend our money. <laughs> Even to buy food. While we kind of really stuffed up, but also why I would never use National Bank of Australia. We they got very helpful. Nabbed. <laughs> they were hopeless. A tear to your eye. They made me cry. <laughs> Do I yell or was just sad? Oh, uh, they were. I really, I was really upset. You're sad. <laughs> on the phone. I'm sorry, we're gonna get this sorted. I've been so nice, I've been so patient, and today I've just lost my complete shit, this poor woman. So frustrating. Couldn't get a hold of our international operator, and the reason why I wanted to get in touch with- It's our Australian address. I'm really sorry this has happened, because I can see that I spoke to you as well, like I, and I can't believe that it's still not done. So I, I do apologize for this. That's I'm okay. To... It's not your fault. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Well, we'll try again. That's what they told me last week and it didn't happen. So, fingers crossed. I was. I think we, she was hangry. I think we just got really put in a situation that was out of our control and. Um, we tried to be really positive and patient about it, but it's been over two weeks. And we still don't have our card, let's be honest. It's not so resolved, but it is on the way. And initially, the first phone call, they were super helpful and they told me I'd have a card within 24 hours. They'll get the Global Visa International or whatever it is, the Global Visa Association to get a card to us within 24 hours and they said don't worry about it this is all going to be resolved very very quickly um, and that did not happen and there was several phone calls going back and forth they were sending our cards to several emotional phone calls for you darling no it was only, only got emotional on the last one the <laughs> last one they, they pushed me to my max i was like i just couldn't believe that we were having this much trouble and anyone that we've talked to they're like what how can you not have a card within 24 hours so anyway this lifestyle has plenty of challenges as you guys know and lots of surprises and this was something that we probably could have avoided if we were a little bit smarter and um had a couple of credit cards maybe 
Well, not even that. Just don't ever just put all your money into one credit card and then rely on that because if that something does happen, as we've learned the hard way, to update you guys, the bank did end up sending us a card to Australia and our sister-in-law has got that on the way to us over to here. So the last couple of weeks have been... They've been pretty hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry, don't panic. We have been eating and it's We're fine. We're because we have provisions. <laughs> Cruises are like perfect candidates for like crises. That is an update on the card situation. We just wanted to clarify some a few things. Obviously don't do what we do. Take our advice and be better. <laughs> really look into your bank and see how they would actually help you in a situation but ultimately just have a backup card and don't put all of your money into one card at one time. It's not a very good idea. Don't put all your eggs in the one basket, guys. That's what she's trying to say. Yeah, but well, we've learned our lesson and we hope you enjoy this episode. Thanks for joining us. But I tell you what, just before we get off the card topic, if you are Australian, we have found the ING card for Australia is the best. It is. It has no fees, no matter, no matter where you go, and they reimburse you for all your fees everywhere. It's awesome for not being a credit card, it's a debit card. Yeah, we've learned a lot of, we've made a lot of mistakes and we've learned a lot of tricks and tips along the way because we have been traveling for a long time of what not to do and this is another one that we just made this mistake so that you guys could not do it too so you're welcome <laughs> we like to help our viewers in painful situations all right all right so now we're going to get into some riveting boat work i don't i don't know what you're doing lifting floors putting wires through. It's exciting stuff. Hold on to your hats, everyone, because you're about to go on a wild adventure. Under the floor. <laughs> Deep down under. I'm just getting a lot of little jobs out of the road. So yesterday I hardwired up our freezer, hardwired up our VHF radio. There's just lots of little jobs. I haven't shown them all, but one of the jobs I might show you is we've got our Raymarine unit here that was donated to us. It's inside the boat, it's not at the helm, so I'm gonna make a little bracket. I put it up at the helm. There is an option, obviously, you can buy those nice little white pods, but they're quite expensive. Just the whole process of us getting a pod, getting it down here and all that. So what I thought I would do, instead of outlaying all that money on a pod, is go onto Bella's bed for starters, and I found a big chunk of stainless steel I'm just going to cut a strip off this. I don't know, make some sort of bracket up. All right, so here's my helm station, obviously that way. Looking forward. I'm going to mount off this. It's pretty sturdy. So that big sheet of steel, it's now been cut down to a little strip. I'm thinking, notch this out here and notch this out here, and I'll just put a nice little weld around here, probably just on the top side, one there and one there. Mount our Rain marine on top of that, which will be here. I just got to take off this little bracket. It'll mount somewhere on there. First things first, I'll just get this all marked out. Remove this bracket and see what we've got. It'll just be much easier to visually see and adjust from the helm. It makes sense to put it at the helm. Stop flapping me gums and mark this out and I'll cut it out. Let's take some measurements on this. Might just get our center line first. Call that one center. And then center this up and put some lines down the sides here. Got that right in the first hit. Got a bit of lock today, so now what I'll do, these are great little squares for just marking out all over the place. So without moving this, I mark this side of the pole, mark this side of the pole. It doesn't have to be too perfect. I'll use the die grinder to tidy it up as I go. But with my welding skills, the tighter the better is probably going to be for me. I can lay a nice little weld along an edge now, but if it's loose, it's always harder to fill the edge. I might just use a die grinder and just slowly work my way around. I'll get grinding this, we'll have a look at stage two. Back in a minute. All right, it should be inch pipe, which is just over 25 mil. So if we come back a half of 25, 12.5, that should be half our radius. Mark our half radius out using the exact radius, and then I'll grind that out. Let's fit this. I'll put that on there, slide that down to there. It's not real pretty, but it's neat enough. Ideally, if I had like a one inch hole saw and drilled that through and then 
cut straight through the middle of the lines, it'd be perfect, but didn't have the luxury of that today. So I just had to do the way I had to do it. That's all right, that'll, that'll work. I'll get a bead of weld around there, and I think that should just be enough to hold it, but we're just about there, ready for welding. All right, so here's our bracket. Just gonna wind these screws out. That bracket off. Keep that for something. I'll get rid of it. Oh. Oh, it might come in handy for something, you never know. This is what I'm thinking. I'd rather put a little bracket underneath, but I don't think it's needed. Boop, 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 boop. Straight to surf brake. It's a bit higher, it wouldn't hurt. All right, all right. I'm just gonna round these edges off. Let's take those corners off and give us a little polish up. And uh, we might pull out the welder and weld this on. It's actually not too much wind today, if not none. It's really hot, as you can see I'm sweating. It's the start of time when it gets really hot here in Port of Penasco. Should be in the water, not working on the boat. Been here, done that eight months ago and it wasn't fun. Get this on and we can get out of here. Well, it was a crappy bit of stainless steel, but I'll take this off just to give you a quick look. This was just an old piece sitting under Bella's bed and it looks pretty sad. But one thing with stainless steel is it does come up nice and shiny when you give it a little buff. Giving our little bracket a little bit of love. It's come up quite nice. And just cut that off there. Cut that out. Gave a little polish. I didn't even really. I just gave a little 400 and a little bit of a buff up. That's it. I weld that on and we should have head unit at the helm. It is night time. I was waiting for the wind to drop out and it didn't. So I can't wait till tomorrow because I'm impatient and I've got the girls holding up a couple of towels to block that wind to save my shield gas, my argon from getting blown away from my weld. Job's underway, even at 10 o'clock at night. That's laying little dimes down. Once again, the little Eastwood TIG has just come into its own. For a little job like this, I reckon anyone could nearly do it. Come and inspect it, darling. Well, this is the new mount for the um, sounder. So I just put a couple of welds around here. They come up all right. I just put a couple of little brackets under there. Not that this would have sagged, but you know, just having a play with things. So two little brackets under here and my little plate here and I'm going to mount my sounder on that. So it's come up pretty nice. Still learning what settings to have, but all in all, I haven't sanded or done anything to them. That's just had a wire brush and uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to pack that up and mount our sounder on here and see what it looks like finished. Okay, here it is. It's all here, ready to go. Take us places underneath here. That's it. They did a very nice job. It looks great. What's Belly doing over there? Just writing the names on all of the lures that we got from everyone. So everyone on the Amazon wish list who got our season lures, it's amazing. We can now catch a heap of fish and it will be dedicated to whoever bought which lure. So this one is from, this one was from Roland. Amazing, thank you so much. Now I've got to name all these lures. Good job, bud. <laughs> All right, let's see what Roland can catch us. This pen is really bad. Back to the generator, it's been a while, but it's been a while and in between that last time I showed you the generator running, I've hooked up our step down isolation transformer and wired the whole lot into the boat system. So what I'm gonna do now, I've just got our sea chest filling up and I've just, I've run a temporary exhaust hose. Hopefully it doesn't melt on me, it shouldn't. It's water cooled and it's only just for five minutes. But I just went down the shop and just got some cheap um, PVC 
inch and a half hose because just at the moment we haven't hasn't been the budget yet just to get the hose because the hose actually goes from here to the very back of the boat and it's inch and a half exhaust hose it's not cheap what i want to achieve right now is just make sure the whole system's operational so then when we do at some stage get the hose for the generator we know all systems are go so the generator fires up and it runs into its own inverter because it's about to overflow Bella's onto it. I'll turn this water off because this is. I've just got the hose into our sea chest, and that's how I can run the whole boat. Anything because everything feeds off this, so I can just fill this up with water, run the engine, run the generator, and it's good when we haul out of that because I fresh water flush everything with this. But back to what I'm doing. The generator fires up. It creates three phase power, which then goes to this transformer that the generator came with, which is 240 volts. So at this stage it comes through a fuse which you can just see there and I'm going to check that the power coming out of here first is 240. Once I know that's correct I'll flick the fuse and it's going to send it over to, into our isolation transformer which it steps it down from 240 volts to 110. So once I realize, once I know that the power's come out of there at 110 which will be over at this fuse. Um, as soon as I see 110 at that, then I'll flick that fuse and it goes into our inverter and charges the battery and fires up the whole system. So I've got three little steps along the way. So I go, okay, this is working. Okay, isolation transformer is working. Okay, we've got the correct power because this one can transform 140, uh, 240 to 110 or 110 to 240. You can do whatever you want with that thing and it's an isolation transformer so when you use it to plug in from shore power it's got its own sort of loop with its earth system and everything so there's no galvanic corrosion you have to worry about so they're really good unit but anyway i'm going to fire it up and we're going to see if we've got power and all systems are go um, once i fire this up too the inverter fires up and our motherboard fires up. I'll check just behind the motherboard before I flick the fuses and make sure everything's coming through there and we know we're good. So a few little checks along the way and uh, I'll get this ready to go. Um, the absolute handiest little tool any boat owner can have is one of these things. Let's get this fired up. Okay, so there's a start button yet? Yeah. Okay, so what I want you to do when you push on the start button you've got to hold it for like I think it's about eight seconds and then it'll start and let your finger off once you hear it go to start. Okay, you want me to do that now? suck a bit of that out. I couldn't leave the exhaust. I couldn't leave the uh, cap on the tank that I was feeding out through. There's too much pressure but got a few fumes in there. But anyway, systems a go. No, I haven't got it. There, babe. Oh look, you know I'm not overwhelmed with life at all at the moment. There's uh, just lots of old crap under here, but the, I can deal with it. <sighs> so we've had a few electrical issues on the boat um, with grounding issues. And so pretty much in a nutshell guys, the boat hasn't been grounded properly with all our bits and pieces. So I've been trying to go through and work out from our fittings, from the batteries to the engine to and just check the grounding on everything and make sure everything's earthed and it ain't 
So, yeah, we're gonna have to get some more grounding wire. There's not a lot of wire left on the boat that is in bad shape like this because pretty much when we did our lithium install with the Dakota lithium, we pretty much went from there up to our Victron gear, through all the batteries and our main lines, all through the engine bay are all brand new. So there's just a few little sneaky ones that are hiding in spots that we can't see. That's hence we're pulling up the floor. We're here a little bit longer in Puerto Penasco, so it makes sense to pull this up, label it all, throw a few new cables down and We've really nearly been through the whole boat, I'd say now, so it gives me a lot more confidence with things, but it is a lot of work. Um, anyway, we're getting there, one wire at a time. Like any boat works, guys, once you pull things apart, it does look like a mess, but in a minute I'll have this cleaned up. There's just old brine lines, old pressure water maker lines, um, old return lines I've snipped up. Um, also got a couple of old sender lines but all in all and then our old earthing line so once we give it a good clean up at least you sort of know what you've got I know in boats in the past that we've had nearly every boat we've had you end up just pulling out garbage bins full of this stuff well hold on belt hold on hold on hold on You don't hold on, do you? <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> See how quick you can go. Is that it? Yeah. Whenever I pull a wire through, I've just got a bit of this pull cord. Just uh, tie it off. When I pull a wire through, if I do need to replace the wire, the pull cord's there. I don't need to lift up other parts and try and get through it just makes it easier if it's behind a bulkhead behind a wall and you want to pull anything through I generally just pull a line through and that way if I need to return I put a line back through it's already there ready to pull through so so yeah we're just removing all the old paddle wheels old transducers and uh, just getting ready to pull our new one through so clean up, zip tie everything, label all the cables, and then when we have a look in another six months, we'll know what we've got. Or if ever we need to get under there, you can sort of just see what's there. We don't have a properly drawn up schematics of the boat, so we sort of just label as we go. But I tell you what, we've removed so much unused stuff, so it just makes it so much easier to sort of troubleshoot and know what's going on. What I'm going to do, while I've got the floor up, I'm going to run myself a backbone cable through. I'm not doing the whole wiring up yet. We've got an AIS coming, a radar coming, a few little electrical goodies, and I'll show you that later. But for now, while I've got the floor up, what we're going to do is pretty much run a backbone through the whole boat. So the backbone cable gets up into here. That's where the network will be powered up. Uh, we'll obviously connect onto it. and. This section here will have an AIS behind there, powered up, and then we'll continue on to the engine bay with the backbone cable where it'll pick up the head unit at the helm. The radar's connected to that head unit, so that'll be in that. I'm not sure how the autopilot will tie into that because it's quite an old one. We'll see once we get to that. But um, And then any other instruments, wind instruments in our case. Uh, the wind instruments are the old instruments, so we'll be using a similar plug like this, but it's actually, um, it takes the old system, the old Raymarine network. That's about it for now. We'll get into that when we get to it, but for now, while the floor's up and we're just chasing our tail with all these different wires and cleaning up as we go, um, we're just going to lay this backbone cable in. So when we left San Diego and we started heading south towards Ensenada, we ran into all that problem with our fuel and fuel wasn't coming through, the engine was cutting out, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, these things had failed. Whether they were just for petrol, the ones that were on there, or they were just old. Not the biggest fan of these, but the idea behind this is that we can prime up our Raycor filters once they're done, as opposed to topping them up with a jerry can. So I'm gonna put this back on. This is where they came apart, and at the time, I can't even remember what I used, but I did find something. Yeah, a piece of maybe a water maker hose by the look of it. Um, just to make do. I uh, need some pliers. The assistant's going to get me some pliers. 
I think I cut a bit of a barb off at the time of some some fitting. Oh, maybe it was the end of that. That's what it was. I cut that off and used it as a joiner. Uh, yeah, put that in the bin now. I didn't actually have a joiner or anything to get this back together at the time. Okay, there we go. Should be good to go. We'll get our other one. So that one's for our main engine. And we have another separate ray core for the generator. Which, actually I don't even know if I need that. Oh yeah, it probably helps to do the ray core. It's got its little bulb on the side, it pumps up pretty well. Pagaro. Once again, many, many thanks to all our lovely people that support us and our patrons and community and sponsors and everyone that gets behind this adventure. Uh, we just want to say a massive thank you and uh, stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Just remember before you go, hit the link to like and subscribe. It helps us out. <laughs> what? If you haven't already, please hit the like and the subscribe button and stay tuned and we'll see you next week.